Okay, it is now 4.30, calling to order the uh, Trophy Club Mutt One Board of Directors are meeting November 14th. Uh, we have a quorum. First item on the agenda, uh, pursuant to Section 551.074 of the Texas Government Code, Texas Open Meeting Act, the Board of Directors may deliberate the employment of a new general manager will enter into executive session at 4.31 p.m. Well done. I practice it all week. <clears throat> okay. It is now 8.39. We are returning to regular session. No decisions were made uh, in executive session, so we will proceed to uh, our next agenda item uh, because no items were taken on 2A. Uh, citizens comment. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the board on any matter whether or not it is posted on the agenda. The board is not permitted to take action or discuss any comments made to the board at this time concerning the item not listed on the agenda. The board will hear comments on a specific agenda item prior to the board addressing those items. You may speak up to four minutes or the time limit determined by the president or presiding officer to speak during this term you must complete the speakers form that include the topics of your statement citizen comments should be limited to matters of which the board has authority uh, see we have one um, citizen that like to present uh, mr. Brock Harwell uh, please come to the podium give your name and your address and we tell you uh, I don't know if you caught doing that if this is not an item that's specifically listed on the agenda, we will not be able to share any thoughts back with you. It would have to be a future agenda item if we, uh, so that's fine. please announce yourself and please begin, sir. Good deal. Well, I'm Brock Harwell, this is my wife, Vicki, and we live here in Trophy Club at 55 Sonora Drive. And uh, back in May, we had a, an issue with the, the sewer, backed up into our master bedroom, bathroom, and uh, Long story short, we uh, end up having to call the city to come out and turn it off because you dig down in there, it was all mud and water inside there, and I knew there was electronics, and I didn't want to get electrocuted, and plus I didn't want to mess anything up. They came out, turned that off, uh, ended up getting a plumber to come out. They did the uh, camera, or scope, whatever you want to call it, and measured and the uh, city, the line had uh, separated from underneath the street. And they said that it was the city's pipe that had dropped. And so then I brought it up to the, the city and they came out and did a scope or camera as well and said they found the same spot but it's uh, like right at the street at the curb and they marked it and I've got printouts here if you don't want them to see it uh, they said it wasn't it's not the city's issue it's our issue and I don't understand that uh, they've come out before not sure I don't know who came out but someone did some uh, street work have a new curb put in you can see it on picture here as well I don't know what they did but something was done there we had an issue with our driveway a couple years back they dug out it was a water main had broke on the city side replaced it and then I approximately two years later there was an issue with the the uh, drive the supper the uh, dropping and it dropped like four or five inches. And uh, I believe Mr. McMahon came out, inspected it, and look, it appeared when they dug out, they didn't fill it in correctly and put enough dirt to build it back up. And everything washed away and went down, down, I guess you call it downstream. And uh, that's where this location is right now. And so that's why I don't think, we just wanna get this thing done is our bathroom and bedroom is still a wreck. We're trying to get, get We don't want to get it care. fixed until the sewer line's fixed because we don't want it to happen again and have it reoccur and have to get it go through all the 
remodeling and everything all over again. So, so we're just trying to just trying to get get this taken care of. We'd even talked to the mayor and the city council at one of their meetings, and they seemed to not even understand why this was being told that it was our responsibility. Because if it's, if three different plumbers have told us that it's the city's line that has dropped down, and it's at this street, and our line stops when it meets that part of the sewer system at the street, that's the connection to the city's sewer main, then we don't understand why they're wanting us to pay to have the city street fixed. They're saying the pipes under the street are our responsibility, but we don't own the pipes under the street, so. And having to redo the street, I've never heard of that before, as far as residential owners. So that's what we're here for. And we just wanna get, you know, just want to get this taken care of because we'd like to get our house back in order because it's just a total wreck right now. Because I mean, you guys come in there and you want to look at it, you can see it. <laughs> you don't want to see it because <laughs> it's it's a total wreck. Okay. And we just like to get this resolved. Okay. Well, thank you very much for bringing this to our attention. As I mentioned before, we really can't engage in any uh, commentary on it. Uh, we'll speak with staff and then uh, we'll figure out the next steps. Okay, we appreciate yeah. it. Right. Thank Jerry, you very much for coming. Is there any kind of uh, ETA timeline? timeline? Yeah. I think um, as I understand it, um, the staff would be happy to do a presentation item on the next board agenda for this one, which would be the way to bring it back so that the board can address it in the meeting. If this had been on this agenda, then they could talk with you about it, but the way the rules work, they can only just take it as input right now. Um, you and I had this discussion six months ago or so. Yeah, so, it's been about that. Um, yeah. so you know, we'll we'll um, prepare a draft agenda item if we're directed to do so, and come back and give a presentation. We can put the video up on the screen and let them take a look. Yeah, because uh, you also have a still a copy of the uh, yes. the video that, that we sent you. In, I believe that was back in June, something like that. Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. That'll work. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you much. very Thank much. You so much. We apologize that you had to wait so long. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. You Thank do you. the same, sir. Are there any other citizens' comments? No, sir. Okay, we'll proceed to consent agenda. Uh, all matters listed as consent agenda are considered to be routine by the Board of Directors and will be enacted by one motion. There will not be a separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda will be considered separately. Uh, three, uh, consider and take appropriate action to approve the consent agenda. A, October check register B, <coughs> October 21st regular meeting minutes. I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve the consent agenda, items A and B. We have Second. a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda by Vice President Rose, second by Secretary Treasurer Flynn. All in favor indicate by raising your hand. Motion passes unanimously. We'll go to item number four. Consider and take appropriate action to appoint two directors to serve on the audit committee. Staff. Mr. President, this is an annual activity where um, we've had the auditors in all week. Um, they come back, and I want to say it was January 6th, the week was January 6th, roughly. Um, that they would come back and give a preliminary, a little more detailed report to an audit subcommittee, um, give the preliminary findings, and then um, if there's any other questions that come up in that discussion, then they can make those refinements, and then they come back at the January meeting, which I, I forget the date on that one, Stephen. It's, um, uh, I think it's 16th. 16th yeah. on January 2? Uh, January, sorry, it's 20th. Okay, so then we'd bring back the audit for a presentation on the January 20th meeting. Um, so it's typically two board members who just come and listen to the presentation of the auditor. And the committee don't have to meet one time? Do we have a committee right now already in no, place? It's, it's uh, established annually. Yeah, last year I think it was. <coughs> I know I did it. Did I play on it too? Both of you I did. Thought That's you both did. I think it was. I believe the last two years you both have. Yeah, I think the last two years it was you and I. Are you interested? Nope. Are you? Would y'all consider being 2020 again? 
not opposed. The treasurer is not aware. The treasurer is opted out. I, I, I would opt out. I would graciously ask to opt out unless there is no other options. Okay. We'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to <laughs> have uh, Director Wilson and Director Flynn as our the president. Don't look over here. <laughs> Give her one job. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'd like to make motions. <laughs> All right, again, yeah, different. All right, areas. I'd like to make a motion <laughs> for President Wilson and Director, or Vice President, sorry, Vice President Rose to serve on the audit committee for 2020. And we have a motion by Director Castanway to appoint uh, President Wilson and Vice President Rose to serve on the Audit Committee for 2020. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by mm -hmm. Secretary Treasurer Flynn. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by raising your hand. I thought we were going to vote no. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't matter. <laughs> yeah, the, the die was cast. Yeah. Well, he shook his head no, and he said that came down to it, so that's why I said your name first. Okay. okay. Um, item number five, this uh, discussion possible action regarding noise level at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, this is an item that uh, Secretary Treasurer Flynn and I put on the agenda. Um, there's a gentleman. Uh, Mr. Hall. Mr. Hall, uh, that have experienced some noise related to um, at his residence because of uh, some of the things that's going on at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, you want to add any yeah, color to I it, do. Uh, Secretary Treasurer Flynn? So we all might remember this goes back um, several months, um, back to earlier in the year when this first came up. We had our noise study Phase. done, yeah. um, which, um, as I recall, basically said it's with intolerance um, both uh, at the plant level and um, uh, at uh, two different spots outside the plant, one at Mr. Hall's and then one on another street. Um, it kind of went dormant for many months. Um, it might be a number of reasons for that, but it now came back. He contacted me again. We're, we're neighbors around the corner. Um, sent a number of texts again with noise, sound. So I um, went by three different occasions uh, from my house and the noise level and where I was was just outside we, you know, uh, the gates if you will and it's coming from the same spot and we, we know where it's coming from it's that area there and it was loud um, the next Halloween night happens to be Halloween night my wife calls me in as, as the crow flies to our house it's not all that far from the back deck you could hear it was pretty loud our back deck which is you know not next door, it's, it's a ways away. So there's been some discussion, I think, uh, about potential solutions um, that Carmen has brought up in the past. And I think even, Frank, we talked about this when we had our little uh, meet and greet, if you will, about um, maybe another option there. So I, I, it's time we address this again is why we're bringing it forth. Um. If I may, um, I guess I have two pieces of updated information for you. Um, first off, um, uh, Frank and Mike have worked together. We hired an outside contractor to come and align all of the motors on these air blowers, which are related to keeping the sludge from going septic. That's effectively what they do. Um, they are outside, and blowers make noise. That, that's the truth of it. Um, however, um, and Frank can chime in on what they did, they, they found that there were belt issues on all of them is what I understood. Well, maybe, maybe you could tell them about that. All the belts were replaced and um, the motors were, motors were realigned and um, there was, it took care of the noise. I mean, there was a big difference. Monday, I came into the gate and you could hear that, so we we knew we had a problem. We had a we had it scheduled for Wednesday for them to come in to do the work on that, and it's the noise is considerably less. When you talk about the belts, what where are we talking specifically? Which belts? 
on the blowers, there's two belts on each blower. We have four blowers, three are running all the time. And on startup, and even this was to the point where the belts were going bad, they needed to be changed. And any type of moisture, it slipped, that needed to be adjusted, tightened, and new belts. And it's, um... go ahead. Oh, I thought you said something. Yeah, I, well, what I'm getting at, are these the ones out in the outside of the plant, or is, is there is one of them in that one area that's of, that, that the one that we've all kind of had in question? Yeah, all of these are the digester blowers that are in the vicinity that everybody's in question about. Mm -hmm. That one area behind between the buildings yes. where we used to have that, you know, trailer, the trailer that was trailer there that was. helped, we think, at one point in time abate the noise a little bit and... Yes. So those have been addressed? Yes. They've, they've been tuned up. So we got a specialized mechanic to come in and do kind of a vibration analysis, alignment. It sounds like we replaced the belts. And there was a definite reduction of sound at the blowers. You guys are welcome to check that out. But it's happened since this thing got put on the agenda, effectively. Um, so, you know, from my perspective, um, it probably means we just need to have someone come out and do that periodically. We um, developed some other contractor relationships or services for example <coughs> our bar screens our fine screens we now have a annual maintenance contract with Hoover who, who's the vendor for that equipment they come out some semi-annually and take a look at it so it's a it's kind of a fine-tuning of a mechanical device uh, we depend on those devices a great deal um, so I'd be interested to see if you heard the same observation now um, that you heard two weeks ago on Halloween um, so that's one um, thing that we wanted to bring up. Um, secondarily, we did have a building priced, and we are, so that would include an awning and a place to hang curtains. I don't think this um, covers the curtain cost, as near as I could tell. I don't believe so. But it would end up being effectively a 40 by 80 engineered metal building, and the price tag on that would be about 60 grand. Um, we feel like that would meet a lot of our needs and um, significantly dampen the remaining sound coming from those blowers. Um, our budget for this is this is a fourth of that, basically. I think it was in the 13000 Yeah, there's 13000 available right now. I was in for capital so this year. Is this the one, Frank, we were talking about where it's the actual overhang? Um, and as, as we talked, I remember that we weren't necessarily doing this to abate that noise necessarily. Yes, that we, we think it's gonna help, right? But the other benefit to the mud was um, we have you know, these new systems where you want to get undercover to some extent. New so, equipment, we yeah. have new six inch pump, new generator, yeah. and hoses and other things. And it also covers our um, chemicals. Curious that we you mentioned we have a quarter of that amount in the budget. Given the, what it sounds like the necessity of these items, curious why didn't we get the total amount in the budget to address this issue? Um, we really started off with a study and we've shown that we're not doing anything wrong at the no, side. No, so, so, so that's happening. Now what we budgeted for was the cost, and we got a cost estimate from our contractor on that, to come and hang rails so you basically have to pour post put up a set of rails and hang these heavy drapes on them. So you see those in a lot of oil drilling operations where they're, you know, it's, it's a loud impact sort of thing, but they're maybe doing it near a neighborhood. So um, they will hang up these sound curtains to dampen the sound. Even a big, just a big water well has those types of requirements. So the thing that we have in the budget was enough to drape a curtain around there and um, isolate those motors on a day-to-day -day basis from our plant operator, so I, I budgeted that as a safety item. Um, in this case, um, it did the complaint did go dormant for a while, um, but the leaves have started to fall off the trees, and I think that has an attenuating effect. And then, um, sound travels better in cold air than in warm air. I mean, that's, that's the truth of it, and it's been cool. Um, so I think all those things kind of uh, combine, but. I think maybe the root thing was that we had, um, nobody recalls really going through those motors and tuning them, making sure the belts are aligned. If you ever had a like a water pump belt that's loose or misaligned, I mean they whine like crazy. It's a, and I think that's a big part of what we're seeing. 
No, no, and, and I completely understand and appreciate I guess the other need, uh, Frank has described a completely separate need that's apart from the whole noise complaint. So I'm curious, why didn't that get into the budget? So It um, didn't come up before the budget was done. Um, when did we do our tour? That was <coughs> when you and I walked and was talking about the different situations there that we discussed it amongst ourselves, and then you decided, you said you wanted to speak to the board about it. Right. And, and we wanted to get a, a number, an estimated cost. So this is not budgeted at that level, but it's a way to kill two birds with sto one stone, would be uh, my notion. Now, when you look at this number, this doesn't include the cost of the curtains. It's, um, I don't think it includes, um, and I'm only reading it on my small screen because my computer's dead over there. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, I don't think it includes a concrete floor. We're just leaving it gravel, right? Mm -hmm. So it'd be a post with um, a sl slanted top like the other side of the sludge press building. We have a similar awning over there. And one of the things in the curtain solution was the cost of putting up these racks to hold the curtains. Um, we asked these folks to give us a cost for this where the, one of the walls would really be a place to hang those curtains um, and separate that sound from the, the pump, the generator, and the hoses. So getting those big you know, hoses out of the sun will be good for them as well. Right now our spare membrane rack is sitting up against the fence under a, under a piece of yellow plastic. Um, so it's, I'd like to get that out of, out of the sun as well. It's about a $10,000 so membrane rack. So what's the, total S what's the total cost of this? Okay, so we just had a first blush at the cost. This is not a designed thing. This is like, let's, let's just put together a metal building roof posts. Um, and it's estimated at 60,000 with some, with some contingency. Um, that wouldn't include the curtains. Um, we have 13 or so budgeted. Um, we can come back at mid-year, we can do this and just come back at mid-year and make a budget adjustment. That, that's a doable thing. We come back pretty much every April and do a budget amendment anyway. So in my mind, it's a, it's a doable thing. Because it's over 25,000 under our procurement rules, over 25,000, I'm sorry, but under 75, at least on this quote, um, we have to get three quotes in order to comply with our procurement policy. If it goes over 75, it's got to go out to bid. I think that's the number I have. But you mind. said we're at 60, which you feel somewhat comfortable. The curtain piece, if you had to estimate that additional cost, are we talking five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand? That, that's probably only going to be five grand. It was the structure, right, to hold up the, the post. So it's most likely to come in under 75? Yes. Best guesstimate as we sit here tonight? Yes. Okay. I would have a question on the curtains. Uh, as to lifespan versus uh, putting up solid surface with, on the building and doing a dampen, dampening uh, within the building. We can certainly check into that. I mean, that's options. We, we just, you know, we knew this was going to be on the board agenda. Tried to put together some concepts for you all to, uh, to respond to your inquiry. So I get the impression now talking about pulleys alignment and V-belts uh, that must be a multiple series of V-belts that are on it, like four or six or something like that on, on a pulley. Uh, and they're not direct, so we don't have direct drive motor blowers. In other words, the motor's Correct. not directly driving the, the blower. Correct, they're belt driven. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I guess from my perspective, it'd be great to see a, um, an estimate of the total cost. Um, and then this is one person I'd like to see come back on the next agenda. Absolutely. I mean, yes. I mean, I, I, we're, to me, it's a win-win situation where whether we like, you know, whether we agree about the noise level, I mean, I'm hearing it from the back porch and there's no trees. So it's there. But the second thing is, the bigger, my bigger concern is, quite frankly, this equipment that we have in, invested a lot of money in and we're not protecting it. So why would we not do this given a reasonable budget to do it? I know we gotta find it, but I think it's reasonable to do that. 
sir. We'll bring back a more refined um, set of information for you on the December 16th meeting, I think. I think it's 16th. Yes. <clears throat> what, what, just one more final question. What is the time frame to get this structure, build, build this structure? Is it something that an outside company comes in, puts it up, and kind of that's how it all works? Yes. I think it's okay. we're really talking about just like cement footers, steel beams, uh, metal roof. I mean, it's, it's yeah. a carport almost, but. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Item number six, consider, consider and take appropriate action regarding employee health and ancillary benefits for calendar year beginning January 1st, 2020 and ending December 31st, 2020. Yeah. Staff. I'd like to go ahead and address this one here. Uh, we're at that time of the year where our health insurance uh, needs to be looked at and make a decision on, uh, based on the budget and the, you know, the needs of the staff here. Uh, our insurance broker, Dean Casey, uh, went out and got us some more quotes for our health insurance, which is up, and also Anitary, which is our uh, SCD, LTD, uh, then his vision and dental. Uh, so the recommendations for the staff uh, is to actually stay with both the same carriers, that we or the three carriers that we have now, which is UHC for our medical, uh, MetLife for LTD, SCD, and Humana for the rest. Um, both of these, you know, the increases are what's within budget that we budgeted for this year. Uh, so we gave the, um, the board here some, some numbers so they can kind of look at what the renewal rates are and to kind of show where they are within budget. Anybody has any specific questions, I'd be glad to address it. So the existing coverage is um, the renewal, even though it increased, it's within budget and it's cheaper than the alternative. That's correct. Well, it depends on which way you look at it. So when it comes to health insurance, you can always dice this apple a different way and play around with all kinds of different options on there. Uh, so if you look at different carriers that are comparable, same kind of policies that we have now, uh, which would be Blue Cross Blue Shield on there, then yes, we are under that and able to keep the same current policy that we have now. Um, and then you know, our job as a staff is we try to, or as manager here, to try to make sure everything stays within budget and we try to prepare, you know, each year for what the increase might be because unfortunately insurance doesn't go down year over year. No, I guess to me it's a no-brainer. If it's a renewal, it's what everyone already has, and it's cheaper. I don't know what there is to debate or discuss. So just to, just to be transparency, the only one that's not cheaper on here is a new company uh, for the dental and the vision. Uh, but parts of it's cheaper, other parts aren't, which is the life that the that the employees pay. So what's the net increase? Every employee is different. It's based on age and how much they want to. That they yeah. want to pay what's, for. What's the net increase to the district? For the district here, we have. Let me get some up my page. So I have. It is twenty-two thousand currently, and is going up. I'm sorry, twenty-two hundred currently for one, going up to twenty-three. So you're looking at thousand or not? Uh, sorry, I'm trying to look at the math on here. It's hard to see on this. So the total is going to be, there's $6,000 difference for the year uh, for this policy here, not including what the employee, that's just the district side itself, uh, but that's within under budget from what we had budget, which is a 15% increase on, on these policies here. And so the recommendation from staff is to keep all policies the same? Correct. There's some comparability and, 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 and benefits to keeping the same policies that you have instead of switching every yeah, year that we have. you don't have to look at changing potentially doctors and things of that nature. And there's also good stuff for like the health insurance if we are self-funded there that you actually get more contributions going back to your overall pool the longer you're with them. So there are some benefits to the district also. Entertain a motion. 
I move that the MUD stay with UHC All Savers for medical benefits for the employees and also stay with Humana and MetLife Insurance for the auxiliary benefits for the employees. A second. We have a motion by v Vice President Rose for our, um, for the district to remain with their current benefits providers, uh, UHC All Savers for health and medical. Or yeah, health. That's medical. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um, medical benefits and MetLife for ancillary benefits. Humana and. and Humana. Say again. Humana and. Hum Met Humana and, and MetLife for the other ancillary benefits. Uh, it was seconded by uh, Director Castingway. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by raising your hand. Motion passes unanimously. We go to item number seven, consider and take appropriate action regarding the October 2019 combined financial and variance reports. A combined financials, B combined combined variance. Uh, this would be real quick since it's the first month of the fiscal year. There's really nothing there to talk about. I mean, we were just finishing up our fiscal year, so the you know I, I would move that we approve the uh, combined variance A and combined uh, financial or combined financials A and combined variance report. Um, a, a more detailed report will be coming next month. Again, we're only a month in. We have a motion by Secretary Treasurer Flynn to I'll second to approve the tw October 2019 combined combined finance and variance reports. Seconded by Director Chapman. Discussion on page 31 of the packet: maintenance and backhoe skid loaders. We got some money back. Eight hundred and fifty-six dollars. Is that correct? Do I read that right? Thirty-one. On page 31, item number 135, 55105-020. Yeah, so that would be a transaction that got uh, refunded back on the P card on the statement, so yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? <laughs> Did I miss something? <laughs> Not worth it repeating. Okay. <laughs> I forget uh, as much. <laughs> All in favor indicate by raise your hand. Yeah. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, reports and updates. Uh, general manager monthly report updates <coughs> E through E. I mean F. Okay. <coughs> Mr. President, um, the brief report is in your packet. It was brief for a reason. Um, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to try to address them. But outside of that, I think everybody is ready to roll. All right. Are there any comments or questions on the general manager's uh, report? Staff, do you have any uh, questions or comments? Look like we closed out the year with a bang, uh, 114,000 gallons sold. Mm. I'd be interested in seeing what our financials look like at the end of the year. See if our dire predictions by our uh, our uh, finance metric holds true. Always as conservative. He, as he as he ducks <laughs> his head behind the computer, my guess is not. We are we we're looking in better shape with a very good, strong, solid September finish. And we also got a nice um, chur up from our wholesale water that yeah. went in our favor. Oh. All right. Which was the difference, actually. There's enough left to buy Greg a new laptop. <laughs> <laughs> or crap. Maybe an since, since since already ordered. Yes. A new used one. <laughs> what, is our final, what is our final guesstimate at this point? Somewhere on the north side of about a half a million. On the oh, north half side of a, a half a million. Red flag. Somewhere Red flag. around there. That's his nickname. Somewhere flag, around yeah. there. 
it's not official yet. We're working on the otters, cleaning it all up, but that's what we're, we're looking at. It's a oh, little, little on the... Seem, seem like I remember some just <laughs> crazy nut just saying, I really don't think things are as bad as we think where we need to raise rates. I wonder, Reserve, wonder whatever uh, happened to that guy. He's probably in insane asylum somewhere. The reserve well, policy will sure. appreciate it. On his own boat. <laughs> yes, on his own boat eating eating pizza that was paid for from a back See, home. if you didn't have a conservative finance person, it wouldn't look as good, though, see? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see, future agenda items, we, uh, the item. Uh, Mr. President, could I just add one extra thing? Uh, absolutely, uh, I sir. I didn't put it in the report anywhere, but um, we did as a part of either the true up or the last bill um, convince Fort Worth to pay for the staining of the fence around the meter station. It took a while, but it finally got done. So they're, are they, they're just going to cut us a check? But we, we, we asked them to just put it in as part of our monthly bill as a credit. And I think that's how it got handled, or it was in the yeah, truth. $68,000 $68, for the there water. I looked at it's, that. Uh, really? It's $5,000, yeah. isn't it? $5,000 and some change. It's $5,000 and change. Um, we still haven't gotten anywhere with AT&T and the little easement enclosure over here. but yeah. We got to a few different countries, though. We're, we're, we're tracking it down. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, in Stevens to yeah. some of that half a million. We did get about a hundred and sixty thousand dollar credit in our true up in Fort Worth, yeah. which does make up the difference from what mine is. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I, and I think, and I think, oh, really, the big credit goes to the staff on the on that excess because operating short staffed and being conservative about what you do so save the money. So I think that's where the credit goes. Thank you, guys. Cop out. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so we have the item for the... Uh, 55 Sonora. The uh, 55 Sonora, as well as the, the, structure. Uh, the structure to bring back on the next agenda yes. items. Yes. Anything else anyone I, wants to add? At some point, we need to put dollars against the uh, reserve policy. <laughs> So that is uh, my goal, actually, is to go ahead and uh, basically finish up the Gatsby now that I'm working on with the auditors right now, finish up the Gatsby part, get that piece out, uh, and then go ahead and start working on the targets for the reserve at the same time now that we see better numbers here. Okay, so Everything will we see that in December, January? I plan on that being in my financials in December. Uh, how much all of it is, how we're going to figure it out. I'm still working on the audit right now. Uh, they're going to be, they, today was the last day here in-house. They finished up early. Um, so they're going to go back uh, now and start finishing up their end there, and they're going to get over the government-wide financials, which then gives us an ability to calculate the net and, and go further from there. Okay, good. So hopefully mid-December, depending on how quick I can get it back, um, I'll, I'll do my best to get at least the gas be done, and then we'll do we'll go from there from that over January. Okay. Uh, any other uh, items for future agenda? I no. But I have one final comment, if I may. Hadn't stopped anybody else. There you go. So um, I want to echo Bill's comments about staff. You guys are awesome, just really awesome, um, everybody. It's a pleasure working with you. Stephen uh, is going under the knife. We all know that again, and he'll be out. And it is one of the board directors, me, direction to don't worry about this stuff, okay? you got a good staff here. All right. Ditto. Worry about yourself mm -hmm. first. Don't be worrying about whether this report got done or this. It doesn't matter. Okay. Take care of yourself. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. yes. And tell Bill Rose Net Reserve Policy. Okay. Get around to it when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have nothing else to do. I'll be sitting up anyways. In, in uh, June. Yeah, we can get there before <laughs> June. Okay, next board meeting scheduled for December 16th, 20, uh, December 16th, uh, 6.30. If there are no other comments, I'd like to adjourn the Trump Club Mud District, 9, 18 p.m. No other comments. Meeting, say again? No other comments. Yeah, I, we, we said You're that already. Joined. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>